The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer and Cotegra Fungicides, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. All right, joining us here on uh, Real Agriculture for the Soybean School, we're pleased to have Alan Froze with Syngenta. And uh, Alan, it's already that time when we look ahead to uh, next growing season and variety decisions when it comes to uh, to 2021. Why don't we start with, with that? What do we have on the landscape and what's on the horizon for 2021 when it comes to soybean varieties and maybe more specifically the trait landscape? Yeah, so 2021, we're going to see even more traits in the market. Uh, I'll get into that in discussion. I want to take a step back first and talk about, you know, what's in the market and then what we'll see coming in 2021. So back in the late 2000s already, it uh, feels like quite a, quite a long time ago, uh, Roundup Ready to Yield was introduced. And that trait technology, uh, you know, to be a little technical as it was in the the trait was inserted into a region of the DNA of the soybean plant uh, that was yield positive they called it and we ended up with uh, more beans that resulted in more beans per per plant uh, sorry more beans per pod and more pods per plant and that technology is still in the marketplace today in fact quite a few of the top varieties that are selling in Western Canada are containing Roundup Ready to Yield technology. Uh, moving on from that, uh, a few years ago was Roundup Ready to, uh, to Extend was launched. That trait added, took Roundup Ready to Yield and added dicamba tolerance on top of that. And so what dicamba tolerance really brought was another mode of action to, to control your tough to control weeds and glyphosate resistant weeds. So when I talk about tough to control uh, and I ask growers, they say, you know, things like buckwheat, lamb's quarters, kochia, those are products that are, or those are uh, weeds that are really t- tough to control with glyphosate. And dicamba is going to be a really strong uh, addition to helping control, the, control those weeds. And uh, the best mode or best fit for that product is to use the dicamba pre-emerge. You're going to get your most bang for your buck because it does have a pretty good residual to it here in Western Canada and, and can last upwards of 14 or more days and help keep your, we, uh, your, your fields clean of weeds. The next technology that we're seeing here uh, launching and, and seeing products come into the market right away is Enlist E3. And what that is, is we have uh, glyphosate tolerance, You've got 2,4-D tolerance as well as Liberty tolerance. And I'm not sure, you know, the Liberty tolerance is really crucial for us here in Western Canada, but certainly that, you know, that 2,4-D. And what does it bring? Well, again, just like Extend, it's another mode of action. Uh, I'm gonna help you with those tough to control weeds. 2,4-D and dicamba, dicamba are similar in what they control, but they also have key differences. So yeah, 2,4-D is gonna help you with your wild buckwheat, you know, lambs quarters, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the big selling feature in my mind for 240 or Enlist E3 tolerant beans is volunteer glyphosate tolerant canola or any canola. 240 is extremely strong on that uh, and is going to help knock out those weeds. Little difference between the two technologies is that with the Enlist platform, you're probably going to want to spray your use your 240 in crop versus pre emerge just because the residual isn't quite as long as what dicamba has. But both very unique offerings in the market and both have a very good fit for Western Canada. Okay, so that's a good overview of the the trait side of things. What about uh, when it comes to some of the other plant characteristics, disease tolerance, some of the other things that we can look forward to in new varieties? Yeah, so plant characteristics, I mean I'm going to talk a little bit about disease. So um, something that was identified last year in Manitoba for the first time was uh, soybean cyst nematode and they discovered it in low levels but uh, you know, we know it's out there and maybe just hasn't been quite discovered yet. So uh, when we look at that, we know, you know, we need to have varieties with SCN tolerance, soybean cyst ne- nematode tolerance. And, you know, we're really looking at bringing those products to the market. Um, that's that's going to be something moving forward that uh, I think all companies are going to fo- focus on, including Syngenta, is, is bringing that tolerance to help growers fight that battle. Um, it may take a little bit of time for it to expand, but as we've seen in uh, Ontario and uh, Quebec and, and the U.S., SCN is a big yield robber, and you need to address that uh, problem right away and, and make sure... Uh, 
um, you're looking on the lookout for it. And I think that's something growers can really do this year is, is look, check their fields if they're in an area where it's been found and uh, make sure they're identifying it properly uh, to monitor that population. As I said, it's, it's not crucial yet. It's small pot, low, you know, low amounts of, of cyst counts, but uh, it's something that in the future is definitely going to be uh, on the radar. And so then that's something that we should also be taking into consideration when we're planning crop rotation and, and variety selection and, and going through that whole process. Absolutely. Uh, you know, crop rotation, uh, non-host crops, those are good ways of helping to manage that. Um, you know, eventually, as we said, uh, SCN resistance in our, pro in our varieties is, is going to help manage that as well. So there's lots of different ways to, to help manage those populations and keep them low, crop rotation being a key one, and, and managing weeds that are host crops uh, or host, uh, host plants as well is, is another good way. All right. Okay, so we've covered SCN. What about uh, some of the other, I guess, issues that we're seeing in, in soybeans in, in Western Canada? And one, with, one of those would be root rots, Phytophthora root rot. What are we seeing on that front when it comes to new varieties? Yeah, so I've seen, you know, we've got a lot of thunderstorms this year, a lot of heavy rains. Uh, and even regardless of that, even in areas that haven't had some of those huge rains, I've seen a lot of increased phytophthora pressure and that's been building over the years and I think it's going to continue to build. Uh, that's something we need to manage. Uh, but absolutely, with new varieties, I think something we're going to see is, is more phytophthora genes uh, in, in varieties. We see most of them already have a gene. You need to have good field tolerance, but a, genes, uh, a gene is going to help you with that as well. And I, the, the Manitoba Pulse growers came out a couple years ago with, uh, with their research and said that the dominant races in Manitoba are uh, races 3, 4, 25, and 28. And when you get into what genes control what races, if you have, uh, for instance, the RPS1A gene in your soybean plant, that actually doesn't get any of those races. I'm not saying we don't have other races in Manitoba, but those major races aren't even being controlled by that gene. So it's also important to know what gene you have. 1C is a little bit better uh, and 3A is, is almost uh, the best uh, because it controls all of those major races that we have here in Canada or in Western Canada. And what we're really looking at within Syngenta is bringing gene stacks. So multiple genes to, to help you fight that phytophthora pressure. All right. Okay, looking down the road then, beyond 2021, what should we be looking for when it comes to traits, these variety characteristics, the improvements that breeders are making when it comes to new varieties, Alan? Yeah, I think it's going to be along those same lines that we've talked about. We're definitely going to see more SCN resistance within our varieties, better phytophthora. Um, I, I believe we're going to see, you know, we have pretty decent IDC tolerance in a lot of varieties, but I think we're going to continue to see that shift to where most varieties have a really strong IDC rating. I know we're, a lot of companies doing work on that. Um, and as well as, you know, yield, uh, yield and, and maturity. So maturity, a big one. We've seen a drastic decline in acres in, in Western Canada. You know, a lot of that coming from outside of uh, the Red River Valley, you know, to Western Manitoba and, and into Saskatchewan. And I think companies know that or that in you know those black soil zones we're still going to see potential rains and and, and acres uh, and, and growers are looking for a fit of of another crop so early maturing beans are still something that's on the radar and bringing earlier maturities with strong genetics and testing in those regions is is still something that we're going to see going forward uh, coming from all the companies all right thanks for your insight today alan